cut this shit off. I ain't in the mood for this shit. I ain't in the mood for this shit. Don't you dare. I ain't in the fucking mood for this shit. Oh, I'm you. not. <laughs> My fucking day is just too ruined. Just look at these goddamn cartoons up here. Movie review extravaganza, double toasted, all that bullshit. Welcome to Welcome. hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people. God damn it. <laughs> I don't know what to fucking say. You know what, y'all? Welcome. Welcome, studio. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all know I got some shit today. Y'all know I got some shit to say today. That's why y'all showed up here. I'm sorry, brother. You know what? We just uh-uh. put you in here full time. I'm sorry you had to end it this way. Can I legally quit now and just be like, no. Hell no, you can't quit now. Ugh. You ain't gonna leave me here by myself doing this shit. But like, Somebody gonna suffer with me. This is cruel and unusual, man. You goddamn right it is. <sighs> I went through it. Who you telling? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You, you, the thing is, you saw it before me. Like you should. You know what? You probably don't need to go see this. Just come to the show and help out. Don't don't go see this. No, man. Somebody was gonna go see this shit with me. <laughs> well, thank Cause you. Because so, sometimes I just need to see people. If you don't know already, we don't ever get like this until we see a Marlon Wayans movie. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts, man. <laughs> Give me some of my money back, Jesus. Because I had to pay to see that shit. Yes, we both had to pay to see this. As I told these guys right here, pay with my fucking soul, my ass, everything that's a part of me, man. And it is not a good time of the year when a Wayans movie comes out. Let me just tell you something. I, I, I love my job. I absolutely feel fortunate and blessed to be doing what we are doing here. Mm-hmm. And every now and then, somebody comes and they say to me, they say, Corey, with this really cool job you have, What is the worst part of it? I mean, what can absolutely just bring that job down for you? Make it hard to do. I say just one thing. Marlon Wayans. If there's one bad thing about my job. I mean, he he looks so happy in that picture, though. Well, good. He's going to hurt a fly right there. Good. Yeah, because he's getting paid to do bullshit. Meanwhile, I got to go see his bullshit because that's part of my fucking job. What is the worst part of my job? Two words, Marlon Wayans. This motherfucker right here. Some people out there, they say, you know, they go, you hear critics all the time. They say, you know what? I just came out of seeing this great motion picture, and that is why I love movies. Mm-hmm. It's only one time when I see a Marlon Wayans movie, and I say, that is why I hate movies. <laughs> Knowing that this dude mm-hmm. can actually get <laughs> behind a fucking camera and make the kind of bullshit that he does and actually get paid for it. Now, I know people think that I'm being hard. I know some people think I'm being hard, but every fucking year, once a year, it's like a dark holiday, man. (laughs) Jesus Christ, man. (laughs) (laughs) Like the reverse Santa Claus or some shit. It is. It's like that one time of the year where they sacrifice people and shit. You know, I sit in that fuck... One time a year, I sit in that fucking dark room, that theater that I do not wish to be in, and I watch this so-called comedy Mm -hmm. of his. And I'm bored and frustrated and just angry, man. Contorting your bodies in all kind of way. Oh God, when uh, that's the uh, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the only good thing about the thing is like they've been the, the there's been less and less people going. Yes, and black people starting to finally realize they don't like this shit. I was sitting there with <laughs> finally it's been like twenty years. <laughs> it's been twenty, but you finally begin to realize I was sitting in front of some black folks. Mm-hmm. They were so fucking, but they tried to laugh because they thought that that's what they were supposed to do. Right. <laughs> Every time they laughed, they, <laughs> oh, oh. they, they didn't like this shit. <laughs> <laughs> like Marlon Wayne's behind him in a seat with a gun. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, ain't it? Laugh. Yeah, they want, they want y'all never cry. <laughs> <laughs> Spray with Joker gas and shit. <laughs> but people, we of course are talking about that Fifty Shades of Grey. It used to. I'm, God damn it. No. Black. I, I don't so- even want to talk about this <laughs> shit. Because I feel like I'm being disrespectful to Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes. You know, it's uh, it's uh, this movie right here. There used to be a time when people like the Zucker Brothers who did Airplane. Mm-hmm. Those were the people who did parodies. Mm-hmm. Naked Gun. Naked and Gun also. and Airplane. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, these two Jews got a hold of it. Free Bergen Seltzer. Yep. And they just kind of, there were bad parodies out there, but they, 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 these spoof films, they ruined it. Those guys at least had the decency, de- decency to go away to Redbox and home video. Yes. But your boy Marlon's still out there running it, man. He's the spoof guy now. The parody man. <laughs> He's the remnant. He's the last yeah. one left. He's the last one fucking left. 
And, you know, he's the last one left in a series of movies that should be going to DVD and home market and Blu-ray and all that good stuff. And the thing with Marlon Wayans is that as much as I can't stand these fucking movies, I understand Mar- there's a difference. I don't hate Marlon Wayans. Mm-hmm. I don't hate Marlon Wayne. Well, with that fucking grin on his face right there, no, he's got a check for doing the bullshit he's doing. Yeah, I can't stand that. <laughs> hey, Corey, I got your money. Yeah, you paid for my shit, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did, brother. You got me, because they don't screen the movies because they know that critics are just going to hate it anyway. Yes. I'm a fair man here. I'm not just coming out here ragging on this movie just to get a rise out of people and, you know, try to get some clicks for putting out a bad review, some cheap humor. I don't do that. But this is new. In a series of movies. Right. And I say that cautiously. I hope that it ends here. But usually when he starts fresh with something, <laughs> there's something funny there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I saw the first Haunted House. No, I'm sorry. Scary movie. There I saw the go. first scary movie. I thought that that movie was hilarious. Man, I laughed so hard. Yeah, everybody. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say everybody, but everybody that I'm friends with. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, I love that movie. That's the last time I laughed at Marlon Wayans. I'm like, I'm sorry. But he eventually left that and the franchise kept going. But then he did a Haunted House. And while I thought that that was bullshit, Martin liked it. I mean, really? I don't say much. You know, to this fucking day, I have, not for, I have not forgiven him. But he liked that. So, you know, him and I are usually consistent with this, but for some reason he found something in it. Was Martin on one of his benders at this time? Because yeah. he had to have been all, under some kind of barbiturate. Martin got, <laughs> Martin got laid that day. He was drunk or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> Marlon Wayne's bought him a blowjob in front of the theater. <laughs> yeah. He's in the, he was in the movie alley getting a hand job or some shit. I don't know what he was doing, but he liked it. So I usually say when he starts fresh with something, you know, it's something there for somebody. But now, with this, that's why I said, you know, this is new. So maybe, just maybe, just maybe that, that, that there's something here for us. And with this, and I, and I even said, how, how can you fuck this up, man? You have something that is primed and ready mm-hmm. to be made fun of. Fifty Shades of Grey fucking had his ass up in the air <laughs> ready to be fucked. <laughs> Spread cheeks. Spread cheeks. <laughs> wide open, ready to be fucked with. That, this movie right here, Fifty Shades of Grey, it's a parody that not only is waiting to happen, but should happen. They could have just acted out this movie without changing the script at all. And everybody like, man, it's the funniest parody ever. <laughs> ah, ah, Corey, good when you hit on something. Uh-oh. <laughs> the thing is, I'm amazed that this film right here, Fifty Shades of Black, can follow Fifty Shades of Grey so closely. Uh-huh. I mean, they pretty much redid the movie with black people. Ignorant yeah. ass black people with black people. And when you watch it, you're saying, man, you know, with them following so closely, if you don't know what the story is, I mean, you could tell, I could tell you the story of Fifty Shades of Grey, and it'll be the same thing for Fifty Shades of Black. Exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, a young student uh, goes and uh, talks to this handsome billionaire guy. She's playing and figures that this guy doesn't have anything to say to me, but he becomes infatuated with her because he sees something in her, mainly because he can beat the shit out of her in his, in his sex dungeon. <laughs> he saw her inner freak. He said, I see your freak in here, you know? <laughs> All these pretty-ass girls out there, they ain't like you, the ugly chicks. You know, I do anything. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like how your self-esteem is that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> but it's the same thing with this. Same story. Think of, think of uh, The Wizard of Oz and The Wiz. Oh. You know, you kind of got the same thing here. Please don't compare those movies to this. <laughs> Again, I'm being disrespectful to both The Wizard of Oz and The Wiz. Oh, but, God. You know, it's just a black version of what you have there. Now, the reason why that, that really baffles me is because, as Corey said, when you look at that and they're doing this so closely, you're thinking, well, shit, this is a no-brainer. They got this down. No problem. Nah, man, Fifty Shades of fucking Grey is still a better comedy than oh. this bullshit. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And I'm not, that's not a joke, people. This movie right here, the reason why, look, I went to see Fifty Shades of Grey, and the only thing I got out of it is that if I put my mind in the mindset of watching a comedy, mm-hmm. it actually works. To see these fucking actors try to do this with a straight face, <laughs> all deadpan and shit, you know? See, you laughing right now. I know you love me, right? <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. Fucking cre- <laughs> creepy-ass Christian Grey and this chick, they ain't got no emotions or anything. It is the biggest fucking parody of Twilight that you will ever see. It's like watching a robot trying to fuck a traffic light. <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> this movie is like watching the worst amateur black comedian that you will ever see. 
Because when you, what happens when you what happens when you put an amateur black comedian out there who don't have any material? It's gonna go to farts and race. <laughs> it goes to farts and race, and with race, he sits up there and talks about black people walk like this. You know, <laughs> white, <laughs> white people walk like you know this. <laughs> 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 As some of these guys, they know. <laughs> Patrick does that exact walk. While it might be true, it's not always funny. You know, it's a, I, what's so frustrating about it is that I'm, I feel worse for the white people in this movie than I do the black people. I don't know, because they were saying some fucked up stuff. That's why. Uh-huh. Because the white people in this movie are there for nothing else but to be racist. Mm-hmm. They're there not, but to say nothing but a racist joke so that... Marlon Wayans, who does nothing but obvious jokes in this movie, can make you know a Black Lives Matter reference, can make a, blue, a, a police brutality reference, are just old racist jokes that don't that, that you know we've heard in passing, mm-hmm. joking with each other. You know it's uh, you know you 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 hate this more than black people hate the police. You know I just it's fucking this dude is it's not just juvenile, but he's he's become more amateurish with each fucking movie, man. You know I've seen better parodies of. Of, of movies and properties by teens on fucking YouTube. Oh, yes. <laughs> on Vine, even. And these are fucking teenagers. And to, to make a point about white people in the movie, that the, why I feel so bad for them, because they're there really as nothing but props to just be racist props. And for, you know, and just for, and just for a, quick, uh, a quick sight gag. And... It also meshes in a way where it's like this dude is spitballing so many fucking ideas. Right. Just throwing one thing out after another that things don't even make sense. You put all this together and it's just a weird fucking jumbled mess in the movie. Anybody know who Florence Henderson is out here? Nobody? Really? You Come got on, this. y'all. Not one person knows who Florence Henderson Really not one? Not exactly. Maybe y'all deserve Marlon Wayans. How about this? Here's a story. A oh, man named Brady, Brady. you know, Car- mm-hmm. Carol Brady. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I and, it was her, the, the, the housekeeper. That, no, it's the wife, Florence Henderson, Carol Brady. Maybe don't recognize her right there. Back in her younger days, hot as hell. Some people thought she was Goldie Hawn back then. They got <laughs> it mixed up. Look, hey, Goldie, I am not her. <laughs> <laughs> not me. But this chick right here, she makes an appearance in the movie. And then somehow, and I don't have a clip of it, but just trust me, it's fucking weird. They bring her into the movie and use her for a whiplash reference. Yeah, the movie with J.K. Simmons. And she plays this, and what's the, and, and the funny thing is, she plays an old woman mm-hmm. in a flashback that's just there to have sex with Marlon Wayans and say racist things like, but I thought black man's dicks were bigger. And I thought y'all had rhythm. I thought y'all had rhythm. Okay. She's only, <laughs> she's only there to be an old white woman from a from a from a, a '60s sitcom, mm-hmm. that's the fucking gag right there. That and if y'all in y'all remember Carol Brady? Like I said, if you carry a joke too far, somebody can get hurt. Yeah, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you better be in this shit. Yeah, Marlon Wayne's career is not slowing down at all. It's actually getting better. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm actually upset that you pull this little white woman in this movie like this, man. This woman, this woman's, you know, she's old, she's like seventy some years old. You know they, you know the Grim Reapers killing celebrities today. It's a, I'll be a fucking sad person, man. This is her last movie. Ooh, what oh, was that Carol, would, what was that Florence Henderson's amazing. trivia? What was Florence Henderson's last movie? Fifty Shades of Black. This is the only time I've sat in the theater and I was like, <laughs> it sat and watched the credits like this. And I couldn't move. I, I was literally stuck to the chair. I thought I was stoned. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Is, uh. Well, you know, it's funny because these are not so much jokes as they are just things that stoners say to each other while they're watching a movie. Uh. They, it's the commentary that fucking kids do while they're watching a movie. It is not, these are not written jokes. That's what frustrates me with this is that these are things that, that they're not fully realized and not clever all the stuff that's in this is just stuff that you would do with your friend and say, tee hee, ain't that funny. The world star hip hop comment sections. That's all this is. And worth this and worth that. Well, fuck you. Well, fuck you too. Oh, okay. I guess that's how this movie is going to go. Yeah. <laughs> it is, to show you the kind of writing that goes into this, it's, uh, again, it's not, uh, they're not so much jokes as they are just. Just, just just saying things to be shocking or showing you things to be shocking. The idea of a sex joke in this movie 
is to throw a pair of panties on the wall and talk about how much a girl's vagina stinks. Yeah. And the panties stick. You know, the, you know the, there's other things in here where he talks about Bill Cosby. He talks about, he talks about your boy right here, Wesley Snipes, man. He makes a Wesley Snipes tax reference in this. Yeah, some people are saying, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. You what? know how current Marlon Wayne's comedy was? <laughs> that was four fucking years ago. Wesley Snipes like, motherfucker, I've been out of jail. <laughs> I did my time. You know, said, why are you bringing up old shit? You know, I did, I, I, I'm actually making movies and TV shows. Shit, is four years ago. Cosby references don't make it. Oh, I put a roofie in your glass like Cosby. Ha, ha, ha. You know, but what the fuck is going on with this dude, man? I don't, look, a lot of people have accused me, and this is what makes me mad right here. A lot of people have accused me of trying to keep a brother down. I'm a, yeah, I've been called a crab. I've been called a crab brother. I've been called a crab nigga. I've been called mm-hmm. somebody who don't support the race. I've been called somebody who's been, I'm an undercover brother for the white man. I've been sent out by the white man to bring another it. brother down. You knew this. I could tell. You knew me. You like mayonnaise way too much. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, <laughs> white guy. Oh my God, it's Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I tell you about this is that buried, bur- buried deep, deep. Into this movie, and near the end of it, Marlon Wayans does kind of have something to say. He makes a social statement and an a actual good one about Fifty Shades of Grey. He makes a statement about sexism and physical abuse to women and the treatment of uh, what's her name, Dakota Johnson, mm-hmm. in the first film. And it's, you know, you wish that for that brief moment, and I'm sure he did it by accident. You know, it wasn't real. You know, for that brief fucking moment that he did that, you 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 get the feeling like, man, he could have done this for the whole film. It's that Marlon Wayans that I'm talking about. He, it's that guy who can he he's not fucking stupid. He knows what he's doing. He's just going for the easy shit here. That's what makes it so frustrating. I even go as far as to give him another compliment to him himself. I'm look. I'm 44. I can look at him and have much respect for him because he's 43. And, and there's no gay shit I'm about to rant on. He looks great. Yeah, he's, he he's looks, in decent shape. He looks fucking amazing in the movie. As you'll see in this clip right here, which, by the way, notice how they also rip off this family guy structure. And they can't even do that right. It's just as clumsy as hell. You look lovely. Thank you. Where did you learn to dance? This little club in Tampa. <laughs> Obvious shit. Obvious shit. But notice how good he looks right there. Notice that that is not CG. That is not a stunt double. That is Marlon Wayans. And he's proud to take his shirt off through the movie. And let me just say that I want you to look. I want you to take another good look at Marlon Wayans. I'll get you a real good look. Take a good look at that right there. It's okay. You're not a gay. If you look at that, it's all right. Admire it. You're not gay, Josh. You're not, it's Josh. Okay. You, Josh, you might like it. No wonder you laughing at this shit. You want to suck his dick, don't you? He's not hairy. That, get, yeah, that, just, that gets you off, don't it? No, oh, bullshit. I want y'all to look at this shit right here. Now, look at me. This mo- that dude got all the black in his hair and his face. I'm going gray. And it took me not too long to realize that the reason why Marlon Wayans looks like that and not do is because he fucking sucks the soul out of everybody that sees this movie. This motherfucker gets younger as I get older watching these goddamn movies. That is why this shit has got to stop. I'm not trying to stop his career. I'm not trying to go against him. I'm not a crab brother or crab nigga. I want, he's taking my life. He's killing me. He's fucking killing me. He's destroying me. Mm-hmm. I can't do this shit no more. Uh-huh. I don't know what else to fucking do. Y'all, the re- what I did before I came in here today, early in the day, I had to do this because I don't know. I pleaded with him. I begged him to stop. Not only be- for his own sake, not only for his own talent, but for my fucking life I had to do this. It seems petty. And I know it's that, that I'm getting criticized because there's more important things going on in the world, but I got to fucking live. I went and started this change.org petition right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
I know y'all think this is funny, but I got this. this a, it's a matter of fucking survival with this. I, may I read these to the people? Go for it, man. I wasn't. I didn't come in here. I didn't. I wasn't mean about it. I wasn't like fuck Marlon Wayans. They'll keep him from making movies. No, I don't want to take away the man's livelihood, but I want to fucking live. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm goddamn tired. Man. I was nice about this. I just came in. I really hope, I mean, I don't want you to die anytime soon, but I hope it's in the Marlon Wayans movies. We, look, we told you. We told you. He told you Marlon Wayans is trying to kill him. <laughs> if I die tomorrow, you know why. I put it very nice. Uh, just allow me. Just bear with me, people. Hear from my voice, just in case the words can't put, or can't, can't put in the, into context what, I, what I'm trying to say here. Now, it says, I, Corey Coleman, a critic based in Austin, Texas, am looking for support and asking Marlon Wayans to please stop making theatrically released spoof movies. I do not wish to affect his income, as these films are made cheap enough to bring in a profit. Instead, I ask for straight-to-home distribution, DVD, Blu-ray, video on demand. The home market has been proven to be a great source of revenue for movies with a niche market. Undeniably, Marlon Wayans does have a fan base. It's my opinion they will support his movies even more on the home release market. Perhaps a Netflix deal can be reached. For example, Adam Sandler's The Ridiculous Six is Netflix's most watched movie ever. I'll put a link in there if you don't believe me. Everybody's reported this shit. He's making money. I mean no disrespect towards Marlon Wayans. What I hope for the most from this move is that it will get Marlon Wayans back into real acting. When he's not going for easy money and laughs with the juvenile humor of his spoof films, he is genuinely funny and a fine actor. Anyone who has seen Requiem for a Dream can attest to his talent as more than capable as a more than capable dramatic actor or performer. In my opinion, he just needs to challenge himself, and hopefully, this petition can push him towards that talent right there. Thank you, thank you. I I, I, I want to do good at this, Corey. You know I do. I enjoy going out to see movies, but this shit made me not want to go ever see another movie again. And that's how bad this shit was. I, I it was. It's okay, brother. Just take your time. I can't. Your okay. Time, I mean, it, it's all right. Marlon Wayans, we see that you are a very smart man. We see that you are, right now, you are very, making a very smart business move because you probably made this for like $6 because there's Vine stars in here. You're filming with what looks like an iPhone, which is, you know, it looks all right. And we, your movies look decent. But that's it. Like, there's nothing else there. The writing is bad, if, if you want to call this shit writing. All your jokes go on way, way too long. And those little jewels that are there that we think, oh, wow, you try to be intelligent and you try to do this. He turns it into another shit or pussy or stink ass hoe joke. And it's, it's, it's redundant and it's fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, people. What's your rating on this? I'm so happy, Corey. I'm so happy. I get to pop the cherry on this right and fuck you, Marlon Wayans, and fuck this movie. Fuck you, Fifty Shades of Black. Get it out. Get it all out, brother. <laughs> fuck you! Get it out. That's right. Get it out your system. Oh, man. People, I want you to realize something about me. I don't mind the juvenile humor. I don't mind the... the, the I, don't, I don't mind fart jokes if it's funny. I don't mind vagina jokes and dick jokes if it's funny. The problem here is that this has been reduced to laziness with Marlon Wayne. How many more times can you repeat black jokes? How many times can you repeat small penis jokes? And I seriously mean that. There's a small penis joke that goes all the way back to fucking a hundred house. It's scattered throughout his movies. It's almost like his trademark. It's just fucking lazy. That's all I'm saying. I don't mind juvenile humor. I laugh for fucking days about it if it's done with some kind of satirical edge or with some point or with some cleverness. But you just don't do it anymore, brother. And you are, you're fucking lazy for it. And I'm going to call you out on that. All joking aside, you're fucking lazy for it. You're fucking lazy and I'm tired. I'm goddamn tired, man. I can't do it anymore. If another Wayans Brothers movie come out or Marlon Wayans movie come out, it, you have it, brother. Just <laughs> say I'm not doing my job. I can't fucking do it anymore, man. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck this movie and fuck you, dude. Man. I don't I don't care how many people on Twitter hate me. I don't care how many people on Facebook hate me. It needs to be said. You're fucking better than this. This movie made me come out with some of the darkest thoughts that have ever been in my head. Like I was like, if I if I ever find out where Marlon Wayans lives, <laughs> I'm gonna set him on fire in his sleep, man. I feel the fucking movie. <laughs> you know, you know, people, let me just I, 
let me just make a point right here. A lot of people are trying to say that I'm trying to keep a brother down. No, I'm not. This it's is, not a lot of people. It's one person. You know, it's, one person in particular. I'm just trying to keep one brother. And I'm not even trying to keep him down. I'm trying to just, I'm trying to make, actually make him advance a little bit. Yeah, anybody can make money. Yeah, I ain't nobody. I, I'm nobody. I'm a fucking poor dude in Austin that ain't making the kind of money you have, don't have the fucking fame you have, ain't got the fucking models that you probably fucked. However, I do have to sit up here and do my job as a critic and, t- and call bullshit for when I sit, especially for somebody that I know can do better than that. I'm not trying to hold anybody down. I'm actually trying to get somebody to do better. People ask why black people ain't getting shit at the Oscars. Marlon Wayans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's not you. Okay, no, I, I, think, I think that does play a part in it, though, because this is the first major black movie that's came out since the whole Oscars so white thing has happened, and I bet the, the Academy is like, see, this is why we don't give y'all shit, because this happens. Said, you just nominated everybody that's black <laughs> that had a chance at the Oscars. We did great with Dope, straight out of Compton, all these great black movies, and, and uh, Beast of No Nation, and then this. Idris Elba can't make it, because they knew Fifty Shades of Black was coming out. I blame you, man.